Hello guys. Now we will discuss features of an ideal transformer. So as the name itself indicates ideal transformer. In practical we don't find such ideal transformers. Because our practical transformers do not have such properties. Okay. It's just a fiction you can call as of now. Okay. It's not a real. So what ideal transformer characteristic says or property says. It has no losses. No losses in sense what? Means it is saying, they are saying like what? There are no any iron losses. There are no any copper losses. There are no any winding losses. Okay. Totally losses are equal to zero. And we know that there is no such machine in the world where there is no any loss. And coming to this, the same itself. Uh, windings have zero resistance. If they have zero resistance, then what happens? Then there will be no loss. Okay. Again, leakage flux is zero. Means we know that while transforming flux from primary winding to secondary winding, there what happens? There is a leakage flux which flows in the air and completes the path. Okay. But here what happens? Here they are saying that there is no any leakage flux. Means whatever flux is uh, produced in the primary part is completely 100% it is transferred to the secondary side of the transformer. So practically doesn't happen. So, so leakage flux they are saying it is zero. And fourth one permeability of core is so high. I told you know we have to make use of uh, thin laminations and all to reduce the eddy current loss as well as we have to use high grade silicon steel so that it uh, uh, they, so that there is no any uh, means there will be a less hysteresis loss and all. So in that case we know that no uh, magnetic core is 100% pure. It has impurities in it. So, even though if you use high grade silicon steel, the loss will be there. But here what they are assuming, here they are assuming the magnetic core is such a thing, means there is it's a full purest form and there will be no any reluctance offered to the magnetic flux. That is what they are going to, they are going to say here, okay. So, uh, permeative core is so high, so that current which flows in the magnetic core or flux which uh, flows in the magnetic core which produces flux and all, that is very much negligible, okay. This is not so. That is not true. And again, there is there doesn't flow any negligible current as we know that um, our magnetic core is not that much of pure quality, not 100% pure. You can say, okay. Now uh, same thing. This formula E2 by V1 is equal to V2 by V1 is equal to I1 by I2 equal to K. The same formula will be carried to this ideal transformer as well. Now coming to the ideal transformer on no load, okay. So first we will discuss ideal transformer how it behaves when there is no any load connected okay and later we can see the remaining part. Now you can see you can consider enough the transformer either it can be core or shell it is a core one they have just uh, shown for the sake of convenience you can see I am going to supply the uh, what AC supply to the primary side that is V1 is the voltage supplied and E1 is the EMF developed so as to oppose the voltage V1 as per the Lenz's law which you already learnt and I1 is the primary current okay P is primary and N1 is the what number of turns okay and we know that a flux flows in the magnetic core okay due to the flux flow what happens is EMF induced EMF gets induced in the secondary side that is E2 and E2 is equal to V2 why E2 is equal to V2 because there is no any load connected here. So no load connected in sense what current will be zero because current always flow in a closed path and you can see there is no any closed path between this end and this end. So current I2 will be zero. If current I2 is zero means the whatever winding loss everything will be also zero. So E2 will be equal to V2 okay due to no load condition. Anyhow we are talking of ideal transformer. We are keeping those aspects in our mind and we are discussing this okay. So now uh, I2 current is zero and we know that V1 is supplied in the primary side and E1 is the EMF generated so as to oppose the V1 as per the Lenz's law. Okay. Uh, so when current I1 starts to flow, what happens? It starts to magnetize this core. Okay. There produces flux around the around this windings and this flux what happens? This flux will link to the secondary circuit through the magnetic core. And again we are believing that winding resistance is zero. So whatever current is drawn by this winding from supply will be what used as magnetizing current. Okay. This whatever supply is used, supply is given will be utilized to produce the 
what flux completely and there is no any if there is no any such current drawn to supply the losses only the current will be drawn to magnetize it so we are calling it as what magnetizing current so i1 is equal to im okay because uh, im uh, what there are no any uh, losses here so as i told you winding losses are zero so im uh, is equal to i1 so that current is called as magnetizing current again there is no any current we are going to draw from the supply to supply the losses as we are considering ideal transformer okay now uh, as we know that uh, this transformer is an inductive device you all know that transformer is an inductive de uh, device so what happens i m whatever i n or i m whatever you can call will lag the voltage by 90 degree yes or not for any inductive circuit pure inductive circuit we are assuming it as pure inductive circuit that is i1 will always lag v1 by 90 degree yes or not if it was a capacity one then what happens and i1 would lead v1 by 90 degrees but in our case it is inductive so what happens the current will always lag voltage by 90 degree to be precise it is current i1 as well as voltage v1 so v1 will be ahead of i1 as i1 lags v1 by 90 degree here they have shown 30 but it should be 90 degree okay like i said this im produces alternating flux okay which is in phase with the im you can see in this um circuit here in the phasor diagram like i said you can see i1 is equal to im because i1 is supplying only magnetizing current there it is not supplying any uh, core loss component ca current and all so i1 is equal to im and we know that im is the current which produces flux yes or not so i1 im as well as flux will lie on the same phasor hope this is cleared okay this you can take it as reference how to draw this diagram first you have to draw a single line taking it as a reference and we know that i1 is equal to im why because because i1 is supplying only magnetizing current both are in phase okay i1 and im are in the phase remember this always okay i1 and im are in the phase because both are same and due to this im what happens flux phi is produced in the circuit primary circuit again then it is linked to the secondary circuit to the magnetic core and like i said i told you before that is i1 lags v1 by 90 degree yes or not see i1 lags v1 by 90 degree so v1 will be like this it will be perpendicular or vertical to the reference correct so it is written here v1 leads phi by 90 degree okay this you have to remember hope this part is cleared and now coming to still we have to account for e1 e2 yes or not we have to account for e1 e2 we have accounted for v1 we have accounted for i1 anyhow i2 is zero no need to show that we have to account for e2 now right e1 as well as e2 anyhow e2 is equal to v2 no need to bother now you can see that uh, i i told you that before that when you supply the voltage e1 will start to oppose your supply voltage that is v1 why because due to the lenses law any changes it occurs means lenses law what it says it always oppose the cause yes or not so cause is v1 so it opposes it so what happens so that's why how it opposes it will oppose in the phase in the anti-phase manner anti-phase manner in sense what it is e1 is uh, having 180 degrees with v1 okay you can call you can see e1 lags behind v1 by 180 degree yes or not you can see from here to here it is 90 and from here to here it is 90 so 90 plus 90 is 180 so e1 lag v1 by 180 degree okay even hope this is clear okay and coming to this e1 and e2 yes or not and one thing more interesting thing is here is e2 will be always in phase with e1 for ideal transformer okay e2 will be almost or always can call always phase in phase in with what e1 so e1 and e2 are in phase whereas v1 is in anti-phase with respect to these two or you can call e1 and e2 are anti-phase with v1 anyone anything is fine here but make sure you draw the reference diagram first i1 is equal to im and again that is a current which produces the flux so flux as well as i1 as well as im will lie on the same phasor there is no any phase difference between im im i1 im as well as phi flux but there is a phase difference between v1 and i1 uh, like i said it is an inductive circuit so current always lags behind the voltage so v, uh, v1 is moving like this okay it is moving in anti-clockwise fashion so v1 is ahead of this so what happens uh, uh, what i can say is i1 lags v1 by 90 degree and e1 and e2 are in always in phase but e1 e2 are in anti-phase with v1 okay e1 and 
v2 r in antiphase with the uh, v1 fine and now coming to this uh, power input to the transform transformer is given by what uh, v1 i1 and cosine of angle between v1 as well as i1 okay for this um, ideal transformer with no load condition always remember power input will be what v1 into i1 anyhow v1 into i1 is nothing but what voltage and current at the primary side and cosine of angle between uh, voltage and current what is the co cos angle between v and i you can see it is 90 degree so v1 im anyhow i1 it can be written as im also because we know that i1 is equal to im so cos 90 so when i we know that cos 90 is zero so total power input to the transformer is zero okay so what we have come to conclusion here power input so this particular transformer is zero because I1 and I1 is very 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 much what negligible current though it is ideal transformer we are assuming like that since I, there is no any current I2 here because no load connected here so that's how what happens power input of the transformer will be equal to zero yes or not power input of the transformer is equal to zero only for this is true for only ideal transformer if, if you consider same practical transformer into consideration then even after you connect if you even after you don't connect any load your power input will be not zero not equal to zero some of the power input is utilized to supply the core loss as well as magnetic losses okay we just uh, core loss as well as uh, i mean core loss in sense what hysteresis as well as eddy current losses okay but here we are assuming both losses are zero so the power input to such transformer that is ideal transformer is zero okay now coming into uh, the next part that is practical transformer on load on no load sorry okay uh, till now we discuss ideal transformer on no load now it is for the time practical transformer on no load condition okay two things they have given here and now practical transformer has come into picture means remember there are losses occurring even after you don't connect load so what are the losses which we get even after we don't connect load yes you are right that is constant losses constant losses in sense what it is iron loss or core loss and again it depends again if you categorize uh, then you will get what eddy current loss as well as um, hysteresis loss and how we can reduce the eddy current loss by using thin laminations we have water thin lamination that is magnetic core it is a part of the magnetic core if you use thin laminations then what happens you can reduce the eddy current loss to some extent okay and how to reduce hysteresis loss you can reduce by hysteresis loss by using high grade silicon steel okay if you use your two things into consideration then what happens i can minimize my constant losses okay this is what they have given here and now uh, uh, as a, a topic itself says no load current yes or not no load current then obviously same uh, diagram you can have for this also same thing i2 is equal to 0 v1 i1 e1 p n1 n2 yes everything same okay but one thing you need to remember that is a diagram for practical transformer so now power input will be not equal to zero that is for sure okay some amount of power is always given even after you don't connect any load in the secondary side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to resolve that is uh, resolve in sense what resolve the primary current that is i1 i1 into two parts okay there in ideal transformer it was what i1 was equal to i m but now it is not true so here we have two components of no load input current we are calling it as i naught here and that i naught is equal to i naught is equal to what ic as well as im i naught is equal to what ic as well as im that is a two uh, that is how i resolve the no load input current into two components okay fine i naught that is no load input current i am going to resolve into two parts that is ic as well as im okay as of now now we can consider i1 is equal to i0 but in the ideal transformer it was what i1 is equal to i m right but for now as of now you can consider what i1 is equal to i0 and i0 i0 can be divided into two components one is ic one is i m okay what is ic ic is your active component which is used to supply the losses which is used to supply the core losses so it is called as vatful component okay remember ic is your active component and which is utilized to supply the losses so it is called as vatful component or core loss component of i naught okay but this was not there in your ideal transformer it was equal to zero yes or not ic was zero because 
we were not supplying any of the losses of the transformer since we have considered that transformer as ideal, yes or not? IC was zero there, but IC is present here.